In today's reading of Unwind Your Mind Back to God by David Hofmeister, we continue with Book 1, Laying the Foundation, Chapter 2, Section 5. Consciousness as used in ACIM. Hi, David. I never expected to actually write a question or comment, but here goes. You said, Consciousness, split mind, seemed to come into existence with the belief in separation from God, from oneness. Do you mean ego consciousness, the ordinary self-awareness that appears to exist in a body and has a name and so forth? I ask because I use the term consciousness to mean that which creates and animates the illusory form, that which is an aspect of God and never leaves his mind, a part of the mind of God. My understanding is that this consciousness, being an aspect of God, is eternal and plays and plays and plays extending love first in one direction, then in another, including making up and pretending to experience an illusion of separation complete with amnesia about reality. You continued somewhat later with, God knows no form. God creates the eternal and Christ is an eternal idea in the mind of God. Christ creates the eternal as well. Creation is eternal extension. I am reminded that ACIM tells us God is within us. We can only hear the voice of God, Holy Spirit, by going within. We are part of God, as in, my father and I are one. Certainly, I did not take this to mean within the body, like the throne of God is somewhere near the liver. But I did take it to mean within our mind or consciousness, not brain, which is part of mind. That part of mind knows form, doesn't it? It is aware of itself as currently playing in the illusion of duality, isn't it? Otherwise, a part of the mind of God would be unaware, which is impossible. Greetings, Infinite One. Thanks for taking the time to write. I use the term consciousness as it is used in A Course in Miracles. ACIM states, Revelation unites you directly with God. Miracles unite you directly with your brother. Neither emanates from consciousness, but both are experienced there. Consciousness is the state that induces action, though it does not inspire it. Text Chapter 1, Section 2 Consciousness, the level of perception, was the first split introduced into the mind after the separation, making the mind a perceiver rather than a creator. Consciousness is correctly identified as the domain of the ego. The ego is a wrong-minded attempt to perceive yourself as you wish to be, rather than as you are. Yet, you can know yourself only as you are, because that is all you can be sure of. Everything else is open to question. Text Chapter 3, Section 4 
very quietly now. With your eyes closed, try to let go of all the content that generally occupies your consciousness. Think of your mind as a vast circle surrounded by a layer of heavy dark clouds. You can see only the clouds because you seem to be standing outside the circle and quite apart from it. From where you stand, you can see no reason to believe there is a brilliant light hidden by the clouds. The clouds seem to be the only reality. They seem to be all there is to see. Therefore, you do not attempt to go through them and past them, which is the only way in which you would be really convinced of their lack of substance. Workbook Lesson 69 in the clarification of terms section, the idea of individual consciousness is described as immaterial because it is synonymous with the separation. Studying the separation does not lead to knowledge. Consciousness is described as the mechanism that receives messages from both the Holy Spirit and ego, in other words, the split mind. Consciousness is the focus of the mind training lessons in the workbook. It can be trained to reach the forgiven world that Jesus calls the real world. This is the dreamer of the dream perspective that I speak of frequently, which is a state of consistent peace and non-judgment. Revelation and miracles emanate from the light beyond consciousness. God and Christ, being pure, eternal, abstract light and oneness, have nothing to do with consciousness, which is split into illusory levels. In this sense, there is no God consciousness, for oneness and split mind are not reconcilable. God and Christ are true and consciousness is make-believe or false. God and Spirit are God and Christ. Our Spirit and consciousness is the belief that there is something else in addition to Spirit. Awakening could be described as the release of the make-believe something else. Creation is the light beyond consciousness. Consciousness, being the domain of the ego, does not have creative ability. God creates the eternal and the ego or error makes the finite, temporal, illusion of time-space. It is consciousness which seems to unlearn the ego or split and thus, and thus learn of forgiveness, perceived wholeness. Yet the quotation above saying it cannot reach knowledge reflects the realization that consciousness is an illusion which must disappear before remembering the knowledge of heaven or pure oneness. 
You wrote, I use the term consciousness to mean that which creates and animates the illusory form, that which is an aspect of God and never leaves his mind, a part of the mind of God. My understanding is that this consciousness, being an aspect of God, is eternal and plays and plays and plays and plays, extending love first in one direction, then in another, including making up and pretending to experience an illusion of separation complete with amnesia about reality. Christ never leaves the mind of God, yet consciousness is the belief that Christ has left the mind of God. Creation extends eternally, and as ACIM states, God knows no form. God knows not form. Text, chapter 30, section 3. Christ is an eternal idea in the mind of God. It is the ego domain of consciousness which seems to be making up and pretending to experience an illusion of separation complete with amnesia about reality. God does not forgive, for God has never condemned. Yet, forgiveness, release, letting go, applies to consciousness and thus to releasing the obstacles, what was ego-made, so that the mind can remember God, Christ, and eternal creation. One of the key metaphysical ideas for understanding the importance and necessity of forgiveness of illusion and the release and detachment from the judgment of the world is stated in ACIM as follows. The world was made as an attack on God. It symbolizes fear. And what is fear except love's absence? Thus the world was meant to be a place where God could not enter and where his son could be apart from him. Here was perception born, for knowledge could not cause such insane thoughts. Workbook, Part 2 God is. Christ is awake in the mind of God. The mind which sleeps and dreams of images appears to play with idols, toys of its own making. Yet, the Holy Spirit uses what was made to go far beyond what was made. The Holy Spirit made a waking dream cleansed of judgment. The Holy Spirit knows the distinction between the real and the unreal, and the judgment of the false as false is the only meaningful judgment to be made. This atonement is the gateway to freedom beyond all dreaming, to remembrance of self as Christ in the mind of God. God and Christ are abstract eternal love, and the seeming world of parts and specifics is the veil which has been forgiven. The kingdom of heaven is within. Text chapter 4, section 3. 
I will use the metaphor mentioned in the ACIM workbook. If divine mind were a vast circle of light, and if this circle was seemingly surrounded by dark clouds of false belief and perception, consciousness would be the illusory experience of being outside of the circle. In sinking beneath the clouds of illusion, the experience is one of pure light. In truth, light cannot be surrounded or circumscribed, for light is literally the allness of God and Christ, which no perfect oneness. I rejoice in the forgiveness of illusion, for a child of God cannot be limited in awareness except by illusory belief. And happily, this need not be. I love you forever and ever.